guys it's your girl royalty blog and today i'm back with another video um on this particular video i want to speak about r kelly and the federal um investigation where they uncovered 20 underage sex tapes from his staff and also from his place of residence i also want to speak about the whole little kim and Nicki minaj situation which we do know that this situation between the beef between these two has been going on for a very long time what ever since Nicki minaj came out practically but um first i want to talk about r kelly so you guys do know that um over 20 underage sex tapes was exposed um, to the Fed. So R. Kelly is behind bars thanks to his inner large part to his own inner circle, enablers and ex-employees who handed the Fed's videos of R. Kelly having sex with underage girls according to the attorney for multiple alleged victims. Gerald Griggs, who represents Jocelyn Savage's family, among others, tell TMZ the federal investigation run by the Northern District of Illinois uncovered over 20 videos of Kelly engaged with minors. Both Griggs and our federal law enforcement sources tells us that the tapes show multiple victims and prosecutors confirmed with multiple witnesses the girls were underage. Greg says several of Kelly's enablers, past and present, flipped and turned over the tapes to investigators. He says those videos were exactly what the feds needed to secure indictments for sex crimes, including child pornography. We broke the story last month. An ex-employee testified the singer regularly recorded his sexual encounters with underage girls and believed the feds got their hands on some of that video. As we reported, Kelly was arrested Thursday after a federal grand jury handed up a 13-count indictment, including four counts of produce, producing child pornography and two counts of receiving child pornography. Of course, he's facing another five-count federal indictment out of the Eastern District of New York, which includes racketeering and four violations of the Mann Act. Prosecutors in Brooklyn wants to keep Kelly locked up until his trial. Meanwhile, Jocelyn's parents say they're desperately trying to get in touch with her and get her help and won't feel any vindication over Kelly's arrest until they do. We've reached out to Kelly's team. No word back so far. The U.S. Attorney's Office for Northern Illinois had no comment. So we all know that there has been much talk and much speculation and some facts that has came out about R. Kelly in the past, also now in the present. Um, this story isn't crazy to me because I have been reporting, doing stories on R. Kelly um, since I first started my YouTube page. And even before I started my YouTube page, I was definitely um keeping up with the whole r kelly thing especially like when unwind with tasha k put out videos about r kelly and then also um another lady on youtube i can't think of her name right now it'll come to me um what is her name um anyways the name will come to me and i'll just leave the name in the comments below um, she actually does a lot of conscious videos, a lot of videos exposing Hollywood and the cults in Hollywood. But here's my thing with R. Kelly. A lot of people went back and said that, oh, R. Kelly is the way he is because his sister raped him. And then he turned around and carried that mentality with him for the rest of his life. Well, if R. Kelly carried that mentality with him, why hasn't anyone spoke out, spoke out about his daughters? I mean, as we see on Love and Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta, we see that Drea Kelly is now on that show along with their oldest daughter. Um, I can't think of her name right now, but if you guys just Google it, you guys will find out what you need to know about R. Kelly's oldest daughter. Um... Why didn't things happen with them if he's supposedly a rapist, which we know that R. Kelly does have a thing for younger women. But anyways, I just want to say, um, no, I'm not a conscious channel, but I do 
dab into the conscious community a lot. Um, this is a celebrity gossip channel, so I'll try to keep it um, celebrity gossip. But I do want to say that in Hollywood, we do know that a lot of things has happened in Hollywood as far as um, cults, sexual cults, and all of this. R. Kelly has been a star since a young age. Is it possible that because he was raped by his sister, it was easy for him to get into that Hollywood cult sexual lifestyle? Because we know that anyone in, in Hollywood does have to go through some type of initiation, whether it's man on man, woman on woman, or man on child or woman on child and if you guys do research on this you will see that a lot of celebrities has not blatantly said that they slept with the child or the same sex but they have said things that will make you decipher what they're really saying like lady gaga madonna um rihanna and the list goes on um, but I do want to say that this R. Kelly situation um, is long overdue. I just want to say why is his staff just now coming out, handing these videos over. These people should have been handed these videos over. And I feel like the feds should not give them a pass because they handed the videos over on R. Kelly, I feel like they should be indicted too because you guys have been working with R. Kelly for many years. You guys have known what R. Kelly has been doing, even with the Aaliyah situation and with the whole Aaliyah situation. Um, Aaliyah's parents and her uncle, um, and also Aaliyah isn't innocent in the whole situation. Like R. Kelly said, Aaliyah lied about her age, and Aaliyah was very mature for her age back then, so I can see how it's possible that he really didn't want to know her age or really didn't care to investigate on her age because her uncle was her mentor and her uncle said, hey, Aaliyah's this age, you can pursue her. Then what do you think R. Kelly is going to do? Because you guys know R. Kelly is, isn't the brightest bulb in the room. But no, I'm not defending R. Kelly in everything that he has done. I'm just simply stating my opinion, as you guys can also state your opinion too down in the comments below. But R. Kelly in this situation is just too much. And it's like, are they trying to Bill Cosby him? Which we know that Bill Cosby isn't innocent anytime. A lot of these black men get money. They feel like they're invincible and they can just do whatever. And then they get older and find out, oh, I can't do whatever. Everything that I did is now coming back on me. But with the Bill Cosby situation, a lot of that shit was far-fetched. Um, and maybe with the R. Kelly trial, a lot of the shit is far-fetched as well. Because a lot of these parents knew who R. Kelly was. These parents know that R. Kelly is a certain age. Some of these parents are young, younger than R. Kelly. So why in the hell did you not stop your kids from pursuing R. Kelly? And then people want to say, oh, it's kids. You can't just stop your kids from doing this and that. Well, yes, the hell you can my parents didn't let me date until I was 18 years old. Sure, I did a lot of things behind their back, but I knew not to, you know, do certain things to where my parents would look at me in a different light. But with this situation, these parents knew exactly what they were getting themselves into. They knew R. Kelly was a fucking freak. They knew R. Kelly was wasn't a great man they knew r kelly was a sex addict as you can tell in all of his music all he talks about is sex there are a few songs that r kelly made that isn't talking about sex but majority of his catalog is talking about sex and so um i just want to take you guys over to where this story is about jocelyn savage and azria clary how they were kicked out of the trump towers right after um, R. Kelly was apprehended by the FBI. So this article is talking about R. Kelly, Jocelyn Savage, and Ezreal Clary. Basically, um, 
R. Kelly was arrested by Homeland Security Investigation Agencies for charges related to sex trafficking in Chicago. Since then, news surfaced that Kelly will be transported to New York. Now, news has arrived noting that the girlfriends of the singer, Jocelyn Savage and Azriel Clary, were kicked out of the Trump Towers after Kelly was evicted following charges from the federal indictment. The residence has reportedly been taken over by federal officials and happened after Kelly was taken into custody by officials while walking his dog near the Trump Towers. Okay, so Jocelyn Savage and Ezreal Clary has been kicked out of the Trump Towers. Um, word is that they have nowhere to go. The family is trying to get in touch with them. Um, but I also want to take you guys over to a video where... Jocelyn Savage's family had took over a press conference that um, a news channel was giving about the whole R. Kelly situation. Um, I want you guys to take a look at this clip and I'll be right back with my commentary. Answer that question. A distraught father confronts R. Kelly's crisis manager about the whereabouts of his daughter. So R. Kelly is in there right now in jail. I want to know where my daughter is. Where is she at? Answer that question. Miss Kelly was arrested yesterday. Answer that question. Uh, the family of Kelly's girlfriend, Jocelyn Savage, hijacked a press conference by the singer's spokesman following the latest arrest. Any questions? I got a question. Where is my daughter at? We don't want to come to hear your lies. Timothy Savage claims his 24-year-old daughter is being held against her will by Kelly. Your daughter, I have nothing to do with your daughter. We know, but... Hold up a second. Oh, 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 hold, hold, hold up a second. Daryl Johnson argued with the family for 10 tense minutes as TV cameras rolled. I'm a crisis manager. Family says Jocelyn could not be found following Kelly's arrest last night. We just attempted a well-being check with the Chicago PD and it was unsuccessful. They knocked on the door and no one answered. We want answers and we want them now. Our daughter life is in danger. Kelly was arrested by federal agents in Chicago last night as he walked his dog near the city's Trump Tower where he has an apartment. He was charged with racketeering, kidnapping, child pornography, sexual exploitation of children, and other offenses involving five underage girls. Now, as you guys can see, that was Jocelyn Savage's family attempting to find out where she is at ever since R. Kelly has gotten arrested. But in my opinion, I believe that maybe it is a little brainwashing. Also, it's these women's choices or if they're going to stay with R. Kelly or if they're going to put you know, the trauma and the scaredness behind them and just come out and get help. But you guys know some women who have been battered and abused, it takes them a very long time to tell their story and to come out and get help. The thing I like about Jocelyn Savage's family is ever since the beginning, they haven't gave up on trying to get their daughter back no matter how old the girl is now. Um, no matter what the situation was, whenever they pimped their daughter out to R. Kelly, what I haven't seen is a lot of Ezra Clary's family coming to the rescue and seeing about her. As I stated before, um, I do know that a lot of these hotels do have the basement of the hotel where a lot of the sh a lot of strange shit happens. Um, as you guys seen in the Chicago case with Kanika Jenkins, where they were on the basement floor and a lot of weird ass shit was happening, just like in the Trump Towers and all the other expensive hotels, they do have a lot of weird cult things happening in the basement and on the very top floor of these hotels. So maybe they're just using R. Kelly as a cover up for all the other things that people know about that happens in the hotels because if R. Kelly is a broke man, how in the hell is he paying for stay at the Trump Towers? Like, it doesn't make sense. If this man is broke, how the hell is he paying for Trump Towers? Everybody knows that Trump Towers, a, a night stay at the Trump Towers is very fucking expensive. So for him to still be living at the Trump Towers. There's something fishy going on. Um, but 
you guys can probably find other YouTubers who do the whole YouTube thing where they break down the Hollywood scene. Um, I do have someone that I do listen to. I can't think of her name right now because I listen to a lot of YouTubers. Um, but I will leave her name down in the comment. You guys can go check her page out. Um, but yeah, that's all I basically have on the whole R. Kelly situation. Now we're going to move on to the little Kim and Nicki Minaj situation. Um, I wasn't going to speak on the situation at first, but I just keep seeing little stuff that just makes me want to put my opinion out there like everybody else is stating their opinion on the whole little Kim and Nicki Minaj thing. Okay, so lots of people want to basically say that the little Kim and Nicki Minaj feud started whenever Nicki Minaj did her Sucker Free mixtape with Lil Wayne and she put out the sexy pity, the sexy picture um, similar to Lil Kim's, um, but that's not the case. Um, the beef basically first started whenever Nicki Minaj stepped on the scene with Young Money um, and the way that she presented herself, like as far as her lyrics, Birdman and the crew felt like her lyrics and everything were good lyrics. She just needed an extra ump, um, which like most of the rappers and singers that come out, you always get a team together and they help put you out and make you look good, um, make you appeal to different um, cultures and different races, um, just like what they're trying to do with Megan Thee Stallion now, just like they did with Cardi B. As you guys can see, Nicki Minaj's style did definitely change up. At first, she definitely was a little Kim, but she stated many times that Foxy Brown, Little Kim, um, MC Light, other female rappers, Queen Latifah, other female rappers that she really did love, love, love. And so basically, Little Kim was supposed to sign with Cash Money, but she recorded a track and so she recorded the track with cash money and so they took the track and gave it to Nicki Minaj and little Kim then felt like oh you guys are trying to play me I'm supposed to come over to cash money start a new deal with you guys get my career back up and running but you guys want to take what I'm making for myself and give it to Nicki Minaj so according to this article the first time that little Kim and Nicki Minaj met um, they really didn't see things, see an eye on things. Basically, both women admitted that when they first met backstage at a Little Wayne concert, they both told a different story. Nikki says that she asked Kim if everything was cool between them, but Kim responded, picture somebody saying to me, we good? I wring her throat, snatch out her larynx. Okay, and then the third thing was that both Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim was featured on a Birdman song together. Um, this is not what I was just talking about. Lil' Kim actually did a song, and they tried to take the song and give it to Nicki Minaj. And then after that, they were both on a Birdman song together. Lil' Kim claimed that when she agreed to feature on the track, she had no idea that Nicki would be on it too. In spite of that, Kim said she was cool with it, later claiming it would be good for women. She did, however, take the opportunity to spit the lyric, never be another me, what you out your mind. So for Lil' Kim to say that Nicki Minaj hasn't paid any homage to her, hasn't given her any respect. I mean, if someone does a track with you and you say something like, there will never be another me, what you out your mind? Um, technically, you're the first one throwing shots. But let's move on. Ray J takes shots at Nicki Minaj at Little Kim's concert. So in 2010, Ray J spoke about the trouble that had been brewing while he stood next to Lil' Kim on stage, he said, I'm seeing a lot of Lil' Kim imposters. I'm not saying no names, but you know who. Although she didn't state the name, it was obvious the pair were talking about Nicki Minaj when Lil' Kim said, we love her. We just want her to pay homage. If you don't pay homage, then fuck you. So I just want to take you guys back to a clip of Nicki Minaj definitely paying homage to Lil' Kim in the beginning. I want you guys to check out this clip and I'll be right back with my commentary. Shit, like some unspoken tension between she and I, and I didn't want it to be like that. Like, I recently spoke to Kim for the first time, and I just, you know, because I, I feel like there was some tension, like some unspoken tension between she and I, and I didn't want it to be like that. 
Okay, so after Little Kim and Ray J said Nicki Minaj didn't pay homage, um, then Drake then did a show with Nicki Minaj and said, I don't give a fuck what Lil' Kim or anybody else is talking about. You the baddest chick to ever do the shit. Then the next thing that happened was Nicki Minaj was um, getting hot in the game because, you know, she did the five-star chick with Yo Gotti and people just wanted her on their songs. I mean, Nicki Minaj was everywhere. She did a song with Diddy called Hello, Good Morning. Um, and then the song, she was like, did I kill a queen? And then that's when fans was like, oh, is she talking about Queen B, Little Kim? And so you guys know how the fans do hype up the beef, similar to hyping up the beef with Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. And then um, Little Kim did a interview talking to this is 50 Lil kim said that nikki had been ta taking subliminal shots at her and other female rappers the beef continued when kim rapped at a queen's concert that same month and said i'll kill that bitch with my old shit this shit come and go and then Nicki minaj later did a hot 96 interview later that month and then called little kim a sore loser Nikki, Nikki directly addressed Kim saying, put your music out and when I see your name on Billboard, that's when I'll respond to you, Nikki said. You're going to go down in history now as a sore loser as opposed to going down in history as the queen. Don't play with me. And then Lil' Kim decided to drop her Black Friday um, mixtape. Um, in one of the raps, she said, this hood shit, you and Drake ain't built for it. And she also dubbed Nikki a little Kim wannabe and a clone. Then Nikki also had something to say about Lil' Kim's mixtape. Um, Lil' Kim ended up tweeting that she had only sold um, 113,000 mixtapes on PayPal on the first day of Black Friday's release. And Nikki basically said... Ha ha ha, lifeless, leaves on stretcher, can't go on. And then she also tweeted, the devil is a liar. Um, and then Nicki Minaj goes in on Little Kim releasing a diss track called Tragedy. Um, Nicki dropped um, the lyrics basically saying, it must hurt to sell your album off of PayPal, especially when you're in the game 15 to 20. You was hot when Shaq teamed up with Penny Man. You was magic. I mean, look at you now, ho. You just tragic. You a tragedy. You a parody. Last name Ann, first name Raggedy. And then this was the end of it until... 2010 with little kim did a power 105 interview and she basically said that she would never be able to make amends with Nicki minaj um and then last year in 2013 um Nicki minaj also did another hot 97 um interview um when she stated i don't have beef with anybody let me just say that life is too short nothing is ever that serious and then Nicki Minaj jumped on a flawless remix with um, Beyonce and she called herself the rap queen and then Little Kim heard about her calling herself the rap queen and then Little Kim got offended um, and then she replaced Nicki's face on the artwork with her own and added my tripping or did this whole just say my name queen of rap fuck out of here queen's back fuck out of here time to get this rap bitch up out of here kim says who leaves nikki with a strong message i gave you the rope bitch i want you to hang off this sucker free mixtape um nikki minaj had a 10th track on the record featuring um gucci main and little kim called freaky girl the song is also called wanna minaj and i remember this song because this i was a very big gucci main fan back then because I'm from the South. And also, I was a big fan of Nicki Minaj at the time. And so, I will always play this song on repeat. Um, and in the beginning, Nicki Minaj said, How you gonna do a freaky girl song and not include Nicki Minaj? I mean, come on now. You know my fucking name. Let's get it. And then, um, you know, Nicki Minaj goes into her verse about the song.
And then Little Kim goes into her verse, um, which on this song, there was no shots thrown. It had either one of the girls. Little Kim didn't throw shots at Nikki, and Nikki didn't throw shots at Little Kim. I feel like if you guys have never heard this song before, you guys should definitely go listen to this song because um, it was good lyrics. I mean, every lyric Little Kim spit on this track was fire. Every lyric that Nicki Minaj had spit on this record was fire. So, yeah, um, I just feel like this beef is way over fucking rated. Like, Lil' Kim, you're older than Nicki Minaj. Um, you should have some type of wisdom when it comes to these things. And somebody has to apologize to somebody. I know both of them feel like feel like they're the queens of rap. And no one wants to really sit down and talk about the situation. I felt like little Kim got a, did get a little jealous whenever Nicki Minaj came into the game. Because when she wanted to sign with Cash Money, Cash Money didn't put her as a number one priority. They put Nicki Minaj as a number one priority. Well, that was because Nicki Minaj was hot. All the kids loved Nicki Minaj at the time. Um, and the grown people loved Nicki Minaj at the time, too. I mean... I just feel like maybe they felt like little Kim had her time to shine and it was time for someone else to come in. I just feel like little Kim thought too much into it. Like you can't be the baddest bitch forever. I mean, come on now. Um, there's someone who's always going to take your spot. Just like with Nicki Minaj, a lot of people feel like Cardi B took her spot. Um, I do just feel like they should just, be done with the beef i mean both of these girls are hella grown i mean they're never gonna see eye to eye so let's just agree to disagree i mean as females you shouldn't even be beefing over something so stupid anyways because they're always gonna be looking for the next talent to replace you they're always gonna be someone new to come in and i mean hey i mean just make sure during your little run you're making sure that Basically, you're doing a good job. Your fans are going to remember. You're going to make an impression. You're going to have a long-lasting catalog so that whenever you're not getting radio play anymore, you can make sure you're still getting your record spun, like when you do shows and all of that. Um, yeah, that's all I have on the Nicki Minaj and Little Kim beef. I really didn't want to talk about it, but I just felt like I did have to address it, and this will be the first and last time I address the beef between Nicki Minaj and Little Kim because, as we all know, this beef is hella old. So I want you guys to let me know what you think about R. Kelly's indictments and Jocelyn Savage and Azriel Clary. If you guys have any any information about where these girls are possibly at now that they are not living in the Trump Towers with R. Kelly, please feel free to reach out to someone. Maybe reach out to their family. Maybe reach out to me. Maybe that way I can try to reach out to their family. I don't know. Um, if you guys have any comments about the Nicki Minaj and Little Kim beef, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Don't forget to hit that like button to share the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching my videos. If you guys enjoy my videos and want to see the channel grow, you can like the videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You guys can also donate to the channel at cash app slash princess chun Thank you guys for watching my videos and don't forget to subscribe.